Hello, welcome to Digital Farm TV Rural News. I'm Andy Walker. Australia will be one of few major exporters to increase beef production this year as cattle numbers in key exporting nations dwindled, according to the latest National Australia Bank's Agribusiness Rural Commodities Wrap focusing on beef. Launching the report, NAB Agribusiness General Manager Khan Horn said Australia's cattle herd was bigger than it had been in around 35 years and the industry was seizing export opportunities presented by shrinking beef production by major competitors. The outlook for the Australian beef industry was solid and the wettest two years on record had supported the herd rebuilding effort. The Australian herd at 29.6 million head was at its highest level since 1977 and set to continue growing. Australian beef production was forecast to increase 2.5 per cent in 2012, accelerating to 3.3 per cent in 2013, driven by the larger herd numbers and stronger seasonal conditions. Australia's wool industry moves into the national limelight this week to commemorate another year as the world's biggest apparel wool producer and the world's biggest wool exporter. Australia's peak wool and farming organisations will gather in Melbourne from September 5 to 7 to celebrate Wool Week, hosted by the Australian Wool Industry Secretariat. Wool Producers Australia President Jeff Power said wool continued to be a priceless mainstay and a dependable backbone of Australia's rural industries, raking alongside the grains industry. Australia's 57,000 wool growers earn the nation $2.7 billion a year. National industry body Australian Pork Limited has led a successful manure management bid for research into greenhouse gas mitigation from alternative and improved manure management systems. The National Agriculture Manure Management Program was jointly developed and supported by intensive livestock rural research and development corporations. Australian Pork General Manager Research and Innovation, Dr Darrell D'Souza, said the research laid down the foundations to further develop federal carbon farming initiative methods and carbon credit opportunities for intensive livestock producers. This new funding would certainly enable intensive industries to fast track development of carbon farming methods that would lead to better mitigation of livestock emissions. The federal member for Mali, John Forrest, has described a market access meeting with representatives of the Philippines government as very positive for the Australian table grape industry. Last harvest, Filipino officials travelled to Sunraysia to observe in transit coal disinfestation and monitoring standards, and then returned home to assess the container of fruit on arrival, John Forrest said from Manila. Due to the success of the trial, the Philippines government had indicated it intended revisiting import protocols to allow coal disinfestation of Australian table grape in transit to the Philippines. Further talks about the protocol change will be held between Filipino importers and major Australian exporters at the Asia Fruit Logistica in Hong Kong this week. Australia's Animal Health Alliance has advised producers inside Queensland's tick-free zone to treat their stock for cattle tick now to control the parasite through spring and summer. Alliance CEO Dr Peter Holdsworth said Queensland was divided into three cattle tick zones, free, control and infected, and treatment varied at each location. To maintain the cattle tick free and control zones, the movement of stock out of an infected zone on Queensland's coast was regulated by inspection and treatment requirements, he said. But despite compulsory inspection and treatment as cattle passed through the control zone, producers still needed to remain vigilant in the tick free areas. Australian Farm Institute Chief Mick Keogh says last week's carbon trading deal announcement with Europe brought with it mixed news for agriculture, ABC Online reports. Mick Keogh said the Institute's research had highlighted opportunities for farmers under the Carbon Farming Initiative, but had also pointed to increased costs for processes and industry. He said the federal government's decision to link into the EU's carbon market, where credits were traded at $10 per tonne, meant energy intense industries like dairy and meat processing would see smaller cost increases. But the deal was bad news for producers hoping to make money out of the federal carbon farming initiative. CFI project revenue streams now look decidedly less certain and were certainly lower.
Well, that's it for Digital Farm TV Rural News this week. I'm Andy Walker. See you next week.